there are two types of sovereign citizens. They choose to call themselves by different titles. Henceforth, I'm going to refer to this as a Boro Grove. Makes me happy. The ones that see it as a convenient defense. Uh, I wish that all charges be dropped and the case dismissed. And the ones that are fully bought into the ideology. Those are the crazy ones. I don't know what universe you're from, but there is no Crown Corporation. This is the state of Michigan. Kurt Jensen is one of the crazy ones. Your license was canceled. Interesting. Um, so did, does the body politic and social compact, uh, is that being disregarded? Correct. Oh, That's right. alternate universe stuff. Central 75, you want to copy, stop, 60 and hot air. How's it going? Hey. Good. You have a license registration insurance? Do you have a driver's license? Uh, I, uh, I know, but what state do you license to drive? I have an international for that, that's what I use. I don't have a state ID. What country are you? Well, it's the United States of America. It's, it's this country. It's America. It's not the okay, U.S. So you don't have a driver's license. It's it's not a state corporate ID identification license. But it is legit because I can I can get on a plane with that. I've gotten on a train with that. They take it at the airport. Sure, I'm sure. They talk about I understand it identifies you, but doesn't license you to drive it. Well, it licenses me in this country, in the United States of America. So what uh, government gave you the license? It's the government of the United States of America. It's, again, it's it's a different... Um, from, from the, again, you got, you got the subdivision of Michigan. So Illinois. you got this through the post office? It's basically, I'm telling you, because they've accepted it, they've gone through it, and they said, this is okay. You have a state government card or anything? That's that's it. Right that's there. it. That's it. Yeah. So remember, you're telling me you don't have a driver's license. I'm not a U.S. citizen. Where were you born? Right here, Illinois. Okay, so you were born in the United States. So you are a United States citizen. No, 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 because you might have been out of citizenship. It's completely different. There's United States. United States. The issuing authority is through the Okay. Is there anything illegal in the car? Well, you're going to stop for the duration of this stop, but uh, the, uh, the reason I stopped is you registered on this vehicle or registered in the yeah, state. Sure, well, she's in the town. Yeah, her license is expired. Yeah, she doesn't, so she doesn't have a driver's license. So that's why I stopped you, and now I'm finding out you don't really have a driver's license either. So I'm just trying to tell you, it's. I know do you. Are you familiar with international law? No, because that's where all of this resides. Okay. This is but we're in the United States, and we follow the United States laws, and we're in the state of Michigan, we right. follow the state but of Michigan the United laws. States of America is also on the international level, and that's... Is there any weapons in the car? No. Okay. All right, well, sit tight. I'll be back with you in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you one more thing, if I can. Let me, one more thing, because this is a very, very important. That and this. You'll notice on the name here, it says EMA after the name. Uh -huh. Okay. This name matches with them. Yeah. It's a different entity. Okay, okay. so I, I've had this happen before. Have you ever had a Michigan driver's license? Years and years and years ago. Oh, where happens is when, when you put that in, it's going to say, oh, it's not going to say PMA on it. Okay. Because, but that's not it. Okay, so there's a two different entities going on. So I'm, just, I'm just trying oh. to be aware of that. I get it. Yep. Sit tight. Central 7520, send me another unit, party 3. This guy's a sovereign citizen. He's got a warrant out of Niles. They're confirming it now. He's sovereign, though. So he's trying to tell me that this is his uh, authority and he's not a United oh, States travel. citizen and all this other crap. So, Kirk Edwin Jensen. We got a warrant. We're going to arrest him. 
and I'm gonna give him a bunch of tickets. So let's go get him. Let's get this guy out. <laughs> hey, Mr. Jensen. I need you to step out of the car for me. Okay, you are under arrest right now. You have a warrant for your arrest out of Niles, Michigan. Yeah, it looks like you got cited for not having your driver's license on you. Okay. And then you were supposed to show up to court. You didn't show up to court. That's what it says, so that's what I got to go off. Okay, well, let's head back to my car here. Can she be notified what's going on here? Because we'll figure it out. Because I'm, I'm, I'm like under contract to be able to finish this out. Okay, but this is under contract. Okay. okay. We're gonna figure out this warrant first, and then we'll decide what we're gonna do from there. Okay, Kirk. What's this like? So I, this looks a lot different than my passport. Okay. Yeah, that's because that's issued by the government of the United States of America, but not the U.S. It's a different, completely different entity altogether. The U.S. is a different entity from the United States of America. If you'd like to contact, like, your captain or something like that, or even go even go all the way up through uh, the state, they'll, they'll know what that is. They're familiar with that. Okay. You've been able to get on an airplane with this? I can get on an airplane. I've gotten on a train. I can get on a bus with it. Have you traveled outside of the country with it? I haven't left the country yet. No, I haven't been able to do that, but I've used it for all those modes of transportation. Okay, so regardless of what happens with your warrant, okay, I'm giving you a couple tickets. Um, so you, and I'm going to explain this now, and if you have a different opinion, feel free to take it up with the courts, but um, this is not a valid driver's license, okay? And in Michigan, you have to have a, dr a valid driver's license issued to you from a government, an actual government, um, in order to drive on our roads. So you said you're from Illinois, or you were born in Illinois, um, and you're not a United States citizen, which I don't think is true. I think maybe you, you may have renounced your citizenship at one point, but you would have to have some sort of country of origin, and you haven't given that. Um, so I'm giving you tickets today. One of them is going to be for no operator's license in your possession, um, and then driving while unlicensed or not valid because you had a Michigan driver's license at one time, but now it's canceled, okay? And then the proof of insurance slip that you gave me expired earlier in March, so I'm giving you a ticket for that as well, okay? And then, so you're going to have a court date. It's going to be on April 20th at 8.15 in the morning in Centerville, okay? And like I said, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to talk to them about it. I'm not going to claim by any means being an expert on all this stuff. This is just what I'm perceiving as at this moment. Okay. So, so, so what happens here at this point? Well, the two tickets I mentioned, no operator's license in your possession and driving without a driver's license, they're both misdemeanors. Um, the uh, no proof of insurance is a civil infraction. Okay. So you'll have to go to court. You'll have to figure out what they're, what they're going to make you do. Um, and then go from there, okay? Now that's that's regardless of what happens with your warrant. So I don't have any control over what happens with your warrant. Kirk Jensen. Good morning, sir. Thank you. You got a ticket on April 6th. Uh, driving down M60 near the Three Rivers Airport. Um, no operator's license in possession and no valid ops. They charge it with both. And I don't think you can be convicted of both. Uh, one is a 90 day misdemeanor that carries fine of up to $100 and two points. The other is a 90 day misdemeanor that carries 90 days up to $100 and no points. Let's take a look at your driving record. Your status says canceled. Um, you got one of these in Berrien County in 2019. Well, you really don't have much bad stuff on here. Uh, you just don't have a license. I'm assuming the prosecutor would take the no ops in possession for dismissal of the no valid ops, the one that carries two points. You do have a valid ID, but your license was canceled. Interesting. Um, 
What do you wish to do here, Mr. Jensen? Are you willing to plead to the no operator's license in possession? Uh, I wish that all charges be dropped and the case dismissed. Well, everybody w wishes that uh, from a murder case to a barking dog complaint, but uh, that isn't going to happen. I don't have the authority to dismiss the case. The prosecutor does. Would you like to discuss this with them at a pretrial here this morning? That would be fine. All right. All right. Have a seat. Uh, Laura, I've got a couple of cases for the prosecutor and probably some more. Now, when you meet with the prosecutor for the pretrial, if they resolve the case, for example, if it's this driving case, they dismiss one charge, you're willing to plead to the other charge. You'll come back in the courtroom and we can deal with it at that time. If you wish to continue a plea of not guilty, then you can ask to have an attorney appointed for you and they can set it for further proceedings. case today for um pre-trial it's kirk jensen okay who's here and the he needs an attorney but he doesn't want an attorney and so i just why don't you give me the paperwork okay. and we'll discuss it with him good morning sir hello you're kirk edwin jensen yep. yes mr marvin said he spoke with you you don't wish to enter a plea of guilty which is your right but you don't wish me to appoint an attorney um can we just set this for a bench trial? Or have a, it's either that or a jury trial. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, you have a right to have a, well, let me ask you this. Uh, you don't want to, me to appoint an attorney. Do you wish to hire one? No, I, I, I really don't even want to contract with Crown Corporation here. This has really turned into a, a religious persecution issue uh, because, uh, and I'm sure you can see, I canceled that driver's license 13 years ago because I didn't want to have that contract any longer. And I wanted to get out of that system and be completely separate. So I went with a different government altogether with a different uh, issuing authority. And I have documentation in the form of an international driving permit, uh, which Mr. Marvin acknowledged he is aware of um, because he said he used to have one. So he knows about them. And that's what I had when I presented it to the officer for, for whatever reason, the officer thinks uh, it's not valid or that it's fraudulent. Um, and that is his choice to, to decide that. But um, it, the, the charge of not having any driver's license on me is not true because I did have it on me. Do you I have it with you it. today? No, he has it. Who has it? The officer, Officer Brooks, who took it from me. Um, I have, I have a uh, an international driving permit and a, a passport that was that was issued by a different governing authority than the United States. And for whatever reason, they're choosing not to acknowledge it. Um, but it already has been. Uh, well, that's an interesting defense. Now, we've been struggling with international driver's licenses. For one issue, you have to be in the country legally. So we've got a number of Mexican people that have Mexican driver's license from Michoacan mm -hmm. or Jalisco or one of the Mexican states. But if they're not here legally, it doesn't even, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. You're obviously here legally. You were born a citizen. You may have. I, I have changed my nationality is what I've done. Where's right your now. passport from? It's issued by the government of the United States of America. It's it's not a blue passport. It's a different colored passport than that. Mr. Marvin says that there's no such thing as that. And that's fine if he wants to choose to do that. But I have had no issue. I have had no issue from anyone uh, or any anything using that. Granted, I have not gone to the country with that yet. I have not had the means to do yeah, so. Yeah, good luck. But you go on, way, good luck trying to get back in. My right. advice is don't do that. Mm -hmm. You'll be a man with no country. So well, don't I, leave the country, but you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I have, I according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, I have a right to change my nationality. Uh, the Crown Corporation here is trying to deny me that nationality, uh, which really falls under a religious persecution issue here, because uh, I don't want to have any any more dealings uh, with the Crown Corporation. I don't know what yeah. universe you're from, but there is no Crown Corporation. This is the state of Michigan. And in the state of Michigan, you have to have a driver's license. You may have one. Your operator's license, you're right, is canceled. 
I don't know if I've ever seen that. I, I cut it up and I sent it back to the Secretary of State 13 years ago. I did not want to have that contract any longer. But you got convicted in Niles in 2019 of no ops, failed to appear. I did faulted you, I guess. But yeah, they've got your old driver's license picture in here. But yeah, you you don't have a bad driving record. There's no speeding, seatbelt. I'm, no yeah, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a bad guy. I I don't I I just oh, want yeah, to get you around were here, differently. You were than, here on May 11th. Mm -hmm, correct. And you wanted the complaint dismissed. You told me that you had an inland license canceled and lien. So I set up for the pretrial, which mm -hmm. is what we just did. Now, I got a concern that the officer has your license. Yeah, he still has it. He's, he, he doesn't. I don't know why he hasn't given it back to me yet. Well, I can't. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So Mr. Marvin says he's not. We haven't reached a settlement. Uh, you believe you have a defense. Um, you don't want to have an attorney. So the question becomes, do we set it for a trial in front of the judge or do you wish to have a jury come in and hear this? I want to just plain have it settled and whether it's with him and you. Well, I don't have the authority to settle it. He does. Mm -hmm. I can set it for what's called a last pretrial before before jury trial. And I will get your international. This may be more of a legal issue than a factual issue. Mm -hmm. A, you were driving mm -hmm. in the state of Michigan and you don't have a Michigan driver's license. Oh, the other, but but okay. you may have a valid international license. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. There's no. Now, the prosecutor has the police report. I don't. The other thing that I forget, I failed to mention was that I was also under contract uh, while I was driving that. I was under a legal contract. Um, and obviously that contract was impaired while I was trying to do, while I was trying to uh, fulfill the, the obligations of that contract. That's alternate universe stuff. Uh, there's no contract. The issue no, is... I, I mean, the, the owner of the vehicle, I had a contract with the owner of the vehicle. I was under contract to do some, perform some uh, services for the owner of the vehicle. Oh, okay, so... That that may be so, right. but then you may need a CDL to oh, do that. Your Honor, yes, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at that statute in like years, but um, doesn't an international license have to have a prerequisite of a valid license from some place before you can apply for that um, international well, license? Well, and I yeah. had a national one too as well. So I don't know. I believe uh, we, that's we've a been, prerequisite. But I don't all right, know. well, it may be, wrong. but we've got a legal issue, and yeah. I I don't even. He's got a I theory understand. that may have no basis or may have some basis. We have recently had a man from India mm -hmm. who tried to do everything right. Right. I remember him. Um, and it's so cumbersome and difficult. Mm -hmm. And he really had, he was living here. He had a driver's license from India. He got an international driver's license. Or he had a New York license and somewhere he forgot to dot an I or cross a T. All right, I'm going to set this for a last pretrial, but I need... And what does that mean? It means we're going to take one more effort at resolving this thing, but okay. I need to see your evidence. Okay. Well, the I can tell you the, the officer, Officer Brooks, he's the one that has it. All right. An attorney could help you with the legal issues on this. You don't wish to have... No, a... I, I have other representation. All right, let's assume for the minute that your argument has got some merit, that you've got a, some passport and an international driver's license. Maybe that's enough, but it usually presumes that you have a valid license somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So they didn't take your passport too, did they? Mm -hmm. Took your passport and... Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to set this for last pretrial. And if it can be resolved, great. If it can't be... The question at that point will be, do we have a jury trial or do we have a bench trial? And one of the things about people like you that want to check out of our government and our system, they don't mind bringing in 30 of their fellow citizens to come in and hear their thing. The irony is, if I sent you a jury notice, you wouldn't show up. You would say, I don't contract with you and I won't participate in your system. But you don't have any compunction about dragging 30 other people in here to hear your case. So uh, 
at this point, we haven't gotten that far. Do we? But, can we just decide that in two weeks? Yes, okay. certainly. So let's see. I want to get those documents from the sheriff's department. Take a look at them. Okay. There may need to be some legal research done as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you're putting the burden on them which is how it sort of works. Yeah. They have the burden of proving it beyond a reasonable doubt. So you raise this defense and say, prove it's not right. Well, that isn't exactly how it works. You've got to show there's some merit to the defense. Uh, Key West used to offer passports to the Conk Republic. There was a little place there, and you could get a Conk Republic passport, and it looked like a real passport. And they shut them down. People were using them in other countries to show they had a Conk Republic quasi-American passport. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of screwy passports right. out there. And um, this, and I understand that there's nefarious people who want to do things for nefarious purposes, and that's not me. I, I don't want to do anything for nefarious or evil purposes. I'm trying to be upright and righteous here in what I'm doing. And, I, and I'm just simply wanting to be separate uh, according to my religious beliefs. And that's, and that's all this really boils down to. All right, well, one option is don't drive a car. If you don't wanna participate in it and you wanna opt out of our system, you don't wanna, don't drive. Have somebody else drive you or stay in one place. But if you wanna use our public roadways and share the road with other people that are licensed, you can't just decide I live in an alternate universe and I don't have to obey the same rules that everybody else does. So one option is don't drive and then you won't have to worry about it. But we'll see what we can figure out. We'll take another crack at this and I'll get those documents. If you have proof of insurance, bring it with you. Okay. All right. I'll see you then. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jensen, everything you told me is correct, right? Your name especially. Well, I, I need to make sure that it's it's got PMA at the end of it. That's my legal name. Okay. I changed my name so it has PMA at the end of it legally. Okay. Well, it doesn't have that on it, but I'm saying, like, your name is Kirk Edward Jensen? With the PMA at the end of it, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's, that's the actual legal name. And you did that through a court in Michigan? I'm sorry? Did you do that through a court in Michigan? It's through an online, it's through a, a newspaper publication. Okay, but publishing your name in a newspaper doesn't make you your legal name. In the, in the legal section, yeah. Yeah, that's not how that works. Yeah, that's that's what the um, that's what the legal counsel said, that that would just suffice. Okay, that's not, that's not how it works. Um, you actually, part of, part I'm just of going doing, off of what the legal, sure, legal I, counsel I, I get you. Me. It sounds like you might have got some bad advice, but um, yeah, no, that's not how it works. If you want to legally change your name, you have to do it through a courthouse. The judge has to order it. The reason I'm asking, Kirk, is that they're going to, when you get to this jail, especially based on everything you're telling me, they're going to fingerprint you. And if your name comes back as something else, then we're going to have a whole bunch of more problems. No, so that's the the information that shows up in the system is what it's always been, but it's okay. incorrect. And I, okay. I've done the, the I petitioned to have that change. It was supposed to be done uh, through that through that system, but I'm not sure what was what was not completed about it. So sure, I understand. Um, that's all. That's the only. That's all I know about but it. But that was the name you were given at birth. That's the name that was on the birth certificate. Okay. All right. That's that's the big. That's the most important thing. What's PMA stand for? I'm sorry. What does that stand for? Private Membership Association. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, where'd you get all this information at? This is straight through the government of the United States of America, through the Secretary of State's office. Okay. The Michigan Secretary of State. No, not, not, not Michigan, no. Okay. Private Membership Association is similar to a trust. Okay. Are you still living in Berrien Springs? No, no, I don't. What's your current address? 17...
East Street Suite, three private mailbox, one Bloomington, Illinois. That looks like a shopping mall. What's that? 17 Street. Looks like a shopping mall. That's a it's a UPS store. That's it's a mailbox location where I receive mail. Okay. How many times have you been through this? I'm sorry, what? How many times have you been through this? Uh this will be the third time. Third time? What happens in court? I tell them I'm not part of their private membership association. Um, that I have a different political affiliation and that um, this is forced association. Okay. And pretty much they listen. Yeah. And do what they want and I have to file legal proceedings and it doesn't get pretty after that. So. What do you mean by it doesn't get pretty? I have to file legal proceedings for human uh, traffic, I'm sorry, for trafficking and persons. Okay. And forced associations and okay. um, violation of political rights. Oh. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of paperwork and I, I'm I'm guessing you know about paperwork. Oh yeah. I know a lot about a lot about paperwork. So when you go to court, like, what's the, I mean, I'm sure the judge listens to you, but afterwards he's going to say what he's got to say. What's he usually say? It depends. Sometimes they're in bad mood. Sometimes they listen and shrug their shoulders and move on. They're in, they've got people to deal with and they, and they don't have time for it. Have you ever had any luck afterwards? I'm sorry? Have you ever had any luck afterwards? Like... So you file paperwork. Yeah, but, I have uh, to, I, it goes through a whole process and and apparently some things aren't, some, the messages aren't being received or something like that because I've got documentation on everything, so. Have you ever been awarded any money in civil suits or anything? Sorry? said, so have you ever been awarded any money after any of that paperwork? It's not about the money. I really don't care about the money. I'm just trying to get everything uh, legally straight. And I don't know. Um, I apparently none of these communications or and documentations or anything is getting through because it, obviously that address is not the right address, and I've given the correct address the last three times and it hasn't been updated. So I don't know why the information is not being updated at a minimum, but that's at least what needs to happen. You tried talking to any attorneys about any of this stuff? Sorry? You tried talking to any attorneys about any of this stuff? Oh, no, no. Central 75 Trillion, I'm out of the jail. stuff percolating around, but one defendant isn't represented, so let's take him. Uh, Kurt Edwin Jensen. Yes. Come on up and have a seat, Mr. Jensen. Good afternoon, you. sir. Are you Kirk Edwin Jensen? Yes, I have documents in here that I just filed with the clerk, and I need to submit them here. Is that this thing called non-statutory abatement? That's it. All right, I got it. I provided a copy to Ms. Davis. It's entitled, Kurt Edwin Jensen, Rain Citizen, Rain of Heavens, a set of heart place with an address. Non-statutory abatement. All right, uh, we had kind of a chase our tails around at the time of the arraignment. Um, you are a rain citizen? The, I have a... I have a social compact and a body politic, which gives the authority for the credentials that I had when I had given them to Mr. Brooks at the time. The, and the officer that wrote the ticket. Right. Um, you had said that you were going to try to get those from him 
and uh, see them for yourself. Yeah, I don't know whether I got Ms. Davis got that or not. We did get additional information from the um, agency in Detroit regarding passports, and they confirmed that they are fraudulent. So if this doesn't get resolved today with the plea as charged to these misdemeanors, then we will be amending to have felony charges. All right, fair enough. People call themselves different things. The common vernacular term would become sovereign citizen. And I do not claim that in any shape, way, way, shape, or form. All right. I rebut that. I completely rebut that statement. All right. Well, I don't, I tried to think of a term for it. Well, well the, you, just a minute. Okay. Let me get my thoughts together here. I, we had a guy, Mr. Aiken, a couple of weeks ago, and we went round and round with him and he wanted a jury trial and he didn't show up. And then he was found in contempt and he went to jail. And, and I said, well, how about willfully misinformed defendant? That's too cumbersome or willfully ignorant defendant. And then I was laying in bed between then and now. And I thought, follow me here. Mimsy where the borough groves. It's like, what the heck does that mean? Um, it's from the poem Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. It was written in the 1800s. It's a nonsense poem that doesn't mean anything. And more importantly, there was a science fiction story written maybe during the war called Mimsy Where the Borough Groves. Uh, it's a very interesting story about some toys that were sent from the future back to here. It's pretty relevant right now with cell phones. And um, the third line is Mimsy where the borough grows. And what is a borough grove? It, it doesn't make any sense. So my term for these people that come in with this kind of nonsensical jabberwocky is going to be borough groves. So this is borough grove. Uh, it doesn't mean anything and neither do your pleadings. Uh, this non-statutory abatement and all this stuff about self-claimed contracts and exhibit B and C has no lawful effect. So the question I have here is, do you wish to have a trial on these matters or do you wish to enter a plea to this? Um, so did, does the body politic and social compact, uh, is that being disregarded? Correct. Okay, uh, then I'll go with the trial. All right, then I will. Do you want to have an attorney to assist you? No. All right. You sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The prosecutor is going to charge you with some sort of felony charge. What charge did you have in mind, Ms. Davis? I believe that Prosecutor Morgan looked it up and it was um, fraudulent documentation, basically manufacturing fraudulent passport and a fraudulent license. We talked about Conk Republic passports. Whatever you had, and this false passport and some claim that somehow you had an international driver's license, you have to have a driver's license from somewhere to have an international driver's license. Right. This, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I had that too. I had that too, yes. All right. Well, one last question. The, the documents that were taken by Mr. Brooks, I want to make sure that those are entered in as evidence when the time comes. Do you have those, Deborah? I do not have physical possession of them. I as all evidence, it's held by the sheriff's department and the evidence lockers. So certainly we would introduce those as exhibits. All right. Well, you're always polite enough, but you're I stand this, for well, this it's I stand the problem with this idea. is this is insidiously dangerous. People decide on their own that the rules don't apply to them. And even though they're polite and respectful. You're yanking my chain, and this is a waste of our court's time and Ms. Davis's time. I intend to prove that All these right. things are correct. All right. Maybe you do, but they aren't. This stuff is meaningless. And if everybody decided like you that they don't need a driver's license, and they don't participate in our social contract, and they wish to use our public roadways and our street lights and our court system, but hey, it doesn't apply to me. Things would break down. The rule of law would cease to exist. So it's polite, but it's insidious and it's dangerous. 
what's next? I don't have the social contacts, so I can punch somebody in the nose. I can kill somebody. I can sell drugs. The rules don't apply to me uh, because I'm a RAIN citizen. Well, it don't work that way, at least not here in Michigan or in St. Joe County. Same rules apply to you that apply to everybody else. And you're going to get charged with a felony document fraud case. So I'm going to set this for, do you want a bench trial or a jury trial? Jury. Yeah, the same thing. It's hypocritical. The rules don't apply to you, but you don't mind bringing in 30 of your citizens to come in and hear it. It's going to be just me. It's just going to be just me. I'm going to set for a jury trial. Your Honor, if we amend it, obviously. I understand. I just want a target date. Sure. For August 16. Mimsy, where the boro grows. That's what this amounts to. It was brilliant on the slithy ties. Uh, it, it's a bunch of nonsense. And uh, so, Mr. Borough Grove, I will see you on a- August 16th at 8.30. Your Honor, just to clarify a few things uh, in anticipation of that. Uh, as far as service, Mr. Jensen, will you accept service at the email that you have on this non-statutory abatement? Correct, yes. Okay, so just one clarification that um, I'm going to send a witness list to him, make sure that he has the supplemental report from... Yeah, there is one thing that it does have some merit in here. He asked for discovery, and he's entitled to that. So, yes, this your your request for discovery is honored, and the prosecution will provide all discovery to the defendant. Yes, so we'll be providing that to the email that's listed at... um, on this document that was filed today. And what email will I use to respond? Yours would, the email that it comes from, which okay. is PRLS at okay. St. Joseph County and my org. As far as witnesses, the people would intend to call Deputy Kevin Brooks, Detective Sergeant Brian Steers, Chris Catone, or Catone from the TSA, and James Herdman, Special Agent, Diplomatic Security Service from the Detroit office. Will all that be included with the email? Yes, I will do a written, a written witness list. So What's that you know. officer's name? Uh, the last one, James Herdman, H-E-R-D-M-A-N. And then potentially this um, Cheryl Pulaski. The owner of the car? Yes. Even though you have these mistaken beliefs, what's your objection to having an attorney to help you with this? Uh, I I do not choose to have anyone, any bar or associates representing me. All right. Do you have any witnesses that you wish to call? Potentially the owner of the car. I'm not sure at this point, but that would be one potential minimum. Other witnesses, would they be available? One precaution, the owner of the car might have a Fifth Amendment right not to testify. Mm -hmm. If they're allowing you to drive the car without an operator's license, that could be a misdemeanor in and of itself. So that's something to consider, but we'll address it further. We'll see what Mr. Marvin and Ms. Davis elect to do with this. For further witnesses, would Zoom be available? No, they'd be here live and in person. Okay. All right, you're free to go. Thank you, Ron. They choose to call themselves by different titles. Henceforth, I'm going to refer to this type of defendant as a borough grove. Makes me happy. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the 16th of August. It's jury trial day. We're going to make a record here in just a moment. Uh, the case that is was set for jury trial today is People versus Kirk Edwin Jensen. Mr. Jensen is here. I got information on Monday. Uh, from attorney David Marvin that they have filed a felony charge and uh, they're going to dismiss the misdemeanor charge and you're now charged on a felony complaint charged by the prosecutor. Um, You do have a right to have a trial on this, but the prosecutors amended it to a felony. I guess their figure is that we're going to have to wrestle with this water buffalo. We might as well do it as a felony. So because it is a felony, I'm going to show you plead not guilty. I'm going to arraign you on those charges. 
I will appoint an attorney for you if you wish. What's your opinion regarding that? No. Still wish to have an attorney? All right, you can hire an attorney of your own choosing if you wish. I'm going to set a pre-exam conference for August 29th, a preliminary examination for September 5th. Say it again, and what was it? A pre-exam conference for August 29th at 8.30 and a preliminary examination if needed for September 5th. Um, and I'll send you out to the counter and I'll give you a formal notice of that. At the pre-exam conference, they'll have a chance to discuss this and you do have a right to represent yourself even if it is a felony charge. I apologize. We had our pre-trial in June, you were clear that you wanted your day in court on this and that you wanted a jury. So I said it, you were the only case set for jury trial today and we had summoned 40 citizens to be jurors. Um, this thing got filed on 8-8 eight, eight, and that was last Tuesday. I'm not sure when it actually made it to my office, but it's now a fel the same facts. It's now a felony charge. I guess the original ticket is dismissed. Is that correct, Ms. Davis? I think the civil infraction would still stay on, so the ticket would go along with it because we can't put civil infractions on complaints. All right. So everything but the civil infraction remains? Mm -hmm. Set for pretrial with PEC. 8, 29, 23. And I'd have to look at that. I'm not sure if it truly was a no proof. Now, was no the proof. address that we had for you was a Barry and Springs address. The address the prosecutor put on the complaint is Bloomington, Illinois. It's the mailing address. I received mail. All right. So uh, that Bloomington is a correct mail address. I'm going to set a bond. You've appeared at every hearing. <clears throat> bond is $1,000 PR for the condition that you not drive unless lawfully licensed. This started out as a very minor misdemeanor with fine and cost, which has morphed into something else. Now it's a felony charge. Now that it's a felony, you need to get booked on a felony. You need to get fingerprinted and mugshotted. Um, I'm going to have them fingerprint you now while you're here. You are allowed to represent yourself. Your next court hearing is August 29th. <coughs> so you're free to go. All right. We have Mr. Kirk Jensen here who is unrepresented. I offered to appoint counsel at each stage of the misdemeanor proceedings and again in this case, but he declined. So, Mr. Jensen, you still wish to represent yourself in this matter? I wish to have this case completely dismissed. Well, everybody feels that way. Everybody else who wants their case dismissed, raise your right hand. Yeah, that's unanimous. So I, that's not up to me. Uh, but the question is, I'm willing to appoint counsel for you, but you've represented to me at each stage you wish to represent yourself. I do not wish to have any counsel. All right. Well, then let's talk about where we are. The complaint alleges that on or about April 6th in Lockport Township that you did obstruct justice by preferring a counterfeit U.S. passport and counterfeit international driver's license at the time of a lawful traffic stop, an attempt to avoid criminal liability for driving without a license. The way that is charged, it is a felony punishable by up to five years imprisonment and a fine of up to $10,000. The second count is possession of a reproduced, altered, counterfeit, or forged chauffeur's license, operator's or chauffeur's license. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $2,000. Count three alleges that you had no valid operator's license, plain old no ops. Are also charged with a civil infraction of no proof of insurance. And I object to those. I object to that being uh, labeled as counterfeit on all of those documents. All right. 
Mr. O'Bear, do you have any instructions here or a plea offer? Or? So the offer would be if the defendant wanted to plead to count three operating with no license. It's the 90 day misdemeanor. Uh, we would recommend fines and costs. I object to that and I, I will not consent to that either. All right. You're charged with a felony and you're charged with possession of a false or forged counterfeit license. You're also charged with no proof of insurance. Prosecutor would dismiss all of those charges if you plead to no valid operator's license with a fine and cost. You may be the first person in my 21-year career that objects to having all the felony charges dismissed for a plea to a $200 fine. Nonetheless, um, you object. I object to the fact that it's been labeled as counterfeit. All right, well, they're just willing to dismiss that charge. The allegation in count three is that you are operating a vehicle on a public roadway without having a valid license, sometimes called no ops or no valid operator's license. It's under 257301 of the Michigan Traffic Code. It's punishable by up to 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $100. It carries two points and it goes on your driving record. Um, if you plead guilty to that charge, I'm going to fine you $225. I'm going to give you time to pay it, and the matter will be done. If you don't wish to plead to that, we're going to have a preliminary examination next Wednesday where the prosecutor will attempt to bind you over to circuit court on felony charges and continue the matter for a felony conviction uh, with a potential prison sentence. Uh, so his offer is to just be done with all of it for a plea to no valid operator. So I frankly was kind of surprised by the generous offer, but that's what it is. Um, so our options are to plead to having no valid operator's license. You can even plead no contest. You can plead no contest. You don't admit what happened, but you also don't deny what happened. You allow or accept that a conviction will enter. You and I have a fundamental disagreement about what it means to operate a vehicle or what it means to travel. Uh, but if you want this matter to be over with, you can enter a no contest plea to no valid operator's license. If you want to reap the whirlwind, we can have a preliminary examination next Tuesday afternoon regarding the matter. What would you like to do, Mr. Jensen? I don't accept any of that. All right. The matter will be set for prelim. And just, just to make, make it clear, this would be the third time that a charge of no operator's license has been levied against me, and I'm standing against it because those documents are valid. And I object to them being well, labeled we'll as counterfeit. Well, we'll find out next week. Bond is continued. You're free to go. And just, to re and just a reminder of the civil case that is ongoing and those who are named in that, yourself and Mr. Marvin as well. Kirk Edwin Jensen is an absolute moron. Let me read you his federal court complaint. The charges by claimant within this claim shall reference the codified law of nations, and the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, here and after ICCPR. Claimant is a citizen and one of the permanent population of the reign of the heavens, a set apart place on earth, and a signatory to the new constitution for the reign of the heavens as of the 52nd day in the year of Yahweh 6025. Claimant recognizes that any religion, including, but not limited to, all factions of the Masonic religion not acknowledging Joshua as king and savior or any act of operating without acknowledging an established religion is an act of duality considered Luciferian and of the world. I love that argument. That argument is so stupid. Uh, it's a truly moronic argument. Claimant recognizes that County of St. Joseph is a political subdivision of the political subdivision state of Michigan and is foreign to claimant's political affiliation and society. Claimant was given a notice of arraignment Claimant did not consent to nor give a signature for any contractual sin alleged by the people. U.S. government and state of Michigan are outstandingly indebted to another. Therefore, claimant owes no debt to the outstandingly indebted. No, that's not the way any of this works. As evidenced in the non-statutory abatement filed with the clerk of St. Joseph County Court, claimant hereby charges Deputy for St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department Kevin Brooks, Judge Jeffrey C. Middleton, 
and Prosecutor David Marvin, as collective members of and for the state of Michigan, are in violation of the codified law of nations. It's, it's, it's a very, very shallow puddle, that brain, at this point. Claimant's credentials are currently being held by St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department, therefore denying claimant's foreign status by deputy, sheriff, judge, prosecutor, and the state of Michigan. So what, what is the fight even about? That's the part I don't understand. What is the big victory here? What is the victory you are seeking to achieve here? Claimant hereby charges that deputy, sheriff, judge, prosecutor, and state of Michigan are in violation of ICCPR by denying claimant. One, the right of having retired from the U.S. government and states thereof. Two, are in violation of disturbing the preservation of claimant's religion for salvation by forcing association. Three, are in violation of recognizing, then denying claimant's credentials as an established religion. And four, initiating a bond that is renounced by claimant. Uh, it's a truly moronic argument. Claimant hereby demands relief from personal damages incurred in the form of property assets turned over to claimant. Claimant hereby demands relief in the form of overturning of all previous cases and judgments related to a driver license. Uh, yeah, good luck with that. Claimant hereby demands relief in the form of the return of international translation of national driver permit and passport issued by the Secretary of State for the government currently in possession by St. Joseph County Sheriff Deputy. Claimant further saith not, this 109th day in the year of Yahweh, 6025. There are a bunch of morons who run into walls at top speed and then yell about how much it hurts and how everyone has victimized them. And then they turn around and run into other walls at top speed. Just which, civil, sure which civil case is that? Civil case, the notices and all the recusals and everything that's been filed into this case that I've been filing in. Just to make note of that, that it is you know, on the record. Well, let's take a look. Oh, you filed a August 28th, which is yesterday. I got this. I didn't see it. Uh, objection to the report and recommendation in the matter of civil case. Uh, you filed this in federal court? This was done in a federal court. It has a federal case number on it. And all the defendants are listed. All right. Uh, Along with the notice. Oh, it's great pleadings. It cites Abraham and the Book of Nations and a bunch of other jabberwocky. Uh, but it has been filed in the federal court. Uh, all right. That's all a matter of record. It's in the file. And uh, you've even got Hebrew uh, letters in here. Okay. Uh, I'll see you next uh Tuesday at uh, one o'clock. Later that same evening. Hi there. Hey, Mr. Marvin. Good afternoon. Appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Yeah. 
Right. That's yep. That makes sense. So that's the well, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Well, that about does it for this episode of Adventures with the Tizos. Looks like Mr. Jensen got away with his sovereign citizen scam. Unless the feds decide to file more charges. Yeah. Good luck with that. Although we did have to travel back and forth from Illinois to Michigan quite a few times for these hearings. It might be more expensive than the fines. Mr. Marvin was actually a really nice guy. He really was, yeah. And we're going to be talking to him more uh, for some upcoming documentary that we're working on. We really appreciate each and every one of you. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Because we love you. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.